How's it going everybody? I'm back for another workshop episode today and I'm going to be showing you guys how you can become more effective ice fishermen and be more productive while out on the ice, all while staying budget friendly. Coming up. Alright, on today's episode I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this DIY jaw jacker. If you're unfamiliar with what a jaw jacker is, it's essentially just an ice fishing tip up, but rather than just throwing a flag up when you have a fish nibbling on your bait or your lure, it will actually set the hook for you. So why am I making a DIY jaw jacker as opposed to just buying one? Well, they can be kind of expensive. Typically you're looking at spending probably 40 to $50 for a good jaw jacker. Sometimes more, sometimes a little bit less, but that's still a lot of money. And if you want to buy multiple of them, you're looking at, you know, a hundred, 150, even $200. And that's just not feasible for some people. So I got the supplies for this thing and built it in about 10 minutes and it only cost me about $15 to make for one. And I plan on making two of them. So it's a pretty quick and simple way to get yourself a couple of jaw jackers without breaking the bank. All right, so before I get into materials and actually showing you how I made the jaw jacker, I want to talk a little bit about why one might choose to use a jaw jacker. The first reason is if you're fishing in a place where you're allowed to have multiple lines in the water, sometimes you'll be fishing two or three or four or even five or more lines. And it's going to be really difficult to manage all of those lines by yourself. You know, maybe sometimes you'll be fighting a fish on this line and one of your rods over here all of a sudden has a fish on it too. And it's really difficult to get all those hooks set and manage all that. So it's really convenient if you have multiple lines in the water because the jaw jacker will essentially do the work for you and set the hook should something hit that line. The second reason is maybe you're fishing a lake that has multiple species. Now different species travel and hang out in different sections of the lake. So for example, maybe you're in a lake that has char and rainbow trout. Now you're going to be fishing the rainbow trout up here by the shore in about five to 10 feet of water, but you're going to be fishing the char a little bit further out where it starts to drop off down to 20, 25, 30 feet of water. Now, sometimes the span of distance between your holes, if you're doing that type of fishing can be pretty substantial. So it's not feasible for you to expect to be able to run all the way out to that hole where you now have a char on your line, get the hook set before the char decides, hey, this isn't something that I want to eat and end up swimming off. So let's say you're fishing rainbow trout five to 10 feet of water. You can set this jaw jacker up, you know, several hundred feet away, all the way out 20 feet of water where the char might be hanging out or something like that. And that way you have a better chance of targeting multiple species and being able to set the hooks up on those different species all kind of at the same time without risking losing your fish way over there at your second hole. Now, in addition to the different species thing, another idea that I can think of is if you're fishing a lake that has a large carnivorous fish, such as a pike, where it's more effective sometimes that you have to jig for it and really get that fish's attention in a certain way to get a good hookup. Um, in addition to also rainbow trout in that same lake. Now, a lot of times like stock trout especially will just hit on whatever's just floating in the water. So people use shrimp, eggs, power bait, that kind of stuff. So if you're fishing a lake like that, you can set up a stationary line with just some shrimp dangling there. You don't really have to do much and it's likely that you'll have a rainbow trout or a similar fish end up hitting that shrimp eventually. But you need to be over here jigging in this section of the lake for your pike or you know a muskie or whatever you're fishing for. So that's another scenario where it would be most effective to use a jaw jacker on the hole where you're just going to dangle some shrimp or some eggs or whatever because you can be over here jigging playing with pike and that'll do the job for you and if a rainbow trout takes that shrimp it's going to set that hook and then you can run over there and get your fish without a chance of it swimming away before it decides it doesn't want your bait. Okay so now the third and the final reason that I can think of that one might choose to use a jaw jacker is let's say you've had a really tough day fishing. Maybe you've only gotten a couple bites or you've even gotten no bites. You've been out there for several hours and it's just been super slow and boring so far. So a lot of times, you know, you'll be like, oh, I'm gonna step outside for a smoke, whatever, go take a stroll around the tent. Step out of the tent and that's the second that a fish will hit that bait. You'll hear your rod fall over, but by the time you get back in there or you get over to your rod or whatever, the fish is already gone, it's taken your bait, you missed the hook set, and that's the only fish that you saw all day, and that situation always sucks. So it's super convenient to have a jaw jacker. So even if you're not consistently using it, even when you get bored and you're like, oh, I'm gonna step away for a second, you can at least set it in the jaw jacker and rig it up. So if that is the moment that a fish decides to come and take your bait, at least you'll get that fish. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the materials that you're gonna need to make this DIY jaw jacker. So the most obvious material that you're gonna need is going to be this PVC pipe. Now this is one inch PVC pipe. I bought it in five foot sections at Lowe's and I think it was only about $2.50 to $3 per five foot section. One five foot section will build you one of these jaw jackers. So if you wanna do multiple jaw jackers, get however many five foot sections that is. So I'm gonna build two, I got two five foot sections. You're gonna need one of these caps. I got three for each jaw jacker just so I could cap the ends of the uh, supporting feet out here, but it doesn't really matter. This is the only one that you're actually going to need. You're gonna need one of these metal eyelets and get one of the ones that has a nut on the back of it. Don't get one of the screw on ones because you want this to be tight onto the cap. You're gonna need two of these 90 degree PVC elbows for each jaw jacker. You're gonna need one cross per jaw jacker and you're gonna need one 45 degree elbow per jaw jacker. Now the last step for this jaw jacker is you're gonna need some type of larger gauge metal wire. Now this is the handle off of a paint can and I found that this actually works really, really well and I got this tip from another video that I watched. So the reason this works really well is it's a high enough gauge to where it's strong and it's not gonna bend under pressure of the rod um, being supported on it but it's not so strong that you're not able to bend it because you need to be able to manipulate this in the building process to get it to be this specific shape. The other reason that the paint can handle works really well is because when it comes off the paint can, it already has this little hook built into the end of it, which is what cradles the line. So the eye of the rod comes down and it locks onto this right here, and then you run the line through this. And what happens is when a fish tugs on that line, it pulls this forward just enough to where the rod pops off of this part right here. So that's why this works good, but you could use a high gauge metal wire or any other kind of metal, um, you know, metal piece that looks like this. You could probably even use like a smaller tent stake or something like that, that you're able to use pliers and bend by hand. The other really nice thing about making these DIY jaw jackers is you don't need a lot of tools and you don't need tools that are gonna be expensive or whatever. You need some type of saw to cut the PVC pipe, but the PVC is so soft that you don't need anything crazy. I'm just using this little craft saw. You can use a hack saw, you can use a power saw. Really whatever you have laying around will work just fine. You're going to need a pair of preferably needle nose pliers, but honestly any pliers will probably work. I have these ones here. They're nice and thick and sturdy, which is going to be really helpful for bending that metal wire that I showed you just a minute ago. You're going to need some type of pretty coarse sandpaper just to sand the rough edges off the PVC pipe after you cut them. And you're going to need a power drill with a big enough bit to drill that hole for that metal eyelet to go on the cap on the front of the jaw jacker. And that's really it. That's all you need for tools to build these. One more important thing before we get into the build process. I don't have any measurements to give you guys for the PVC pipe because the measurements actually don't really matter and they're going to be different for every rod, which I'll explain in just a moment. The only measurements that are actually gonna really matter are gonna be this piece right here, and that's gonna depend on the length of the rod that you have, and this piece right here, and that also depends on the length of the rod that you have. Now, I'm using this 36 inch uh, Shakespeare medium heavy rod. Now, the weight of the rod also makes a difference because that's gonna depend on how far the backbone will bend. If you have an ultra light or a light or a light medium or something like that, you're gonna be able to bend this a lot more and it's gonna be easier for you to bend this down and get it set onto the jaw jacker. If you have a medium heavy like this, and this one is also much longer, it's gonna be difficult for you to bend this down and get it set onto the jaw jacker. So in that case, that's where you're gonna need a longer middle supporting piece of the jaw jacker here. And then also you can add a little bit more height on this end to account for that. And that way when it goes in here, just like that, when it bends down to the triggering device, it'll have just enough play in the backbone that when that triggering device releases, it has enough room to move up and set the hook, but you're not bending it so far that you know, you're know you almost breaking the rod. And obviously the shorter and the lighter of a rod that you have, the shorter this middle piece is gonna have to be. And you can also make some height adjustments back here, and you can also maybe even make some height adjustments up here on this one too, to account for that shorter, smaller rod. 
All right, now we're actually ready to start the build process of the jaw jacker, which is gonna be super quick and super easy. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we need to cut this piece. So I'm gonna cut mine, the one that I'm building in this video, to this exact same length that I did this one because this is kind of my test one, and I cut this down a few times to figure out the length. But yours is probably gonna be different from mine, so I'm not gonna give you a measurement for this, but I can tell you probably start, if you have a 36 inch rod like me, I would definitely start at about a foot and go down from there and find your perfect length. If you have a smaller rod, like maybe a 28 or a 24 or something like that, I would probably start 10 inches, move down to nine, try eight, that kind of thing until you find the perfect balance. So I'm gonna cut mine and then we're gonna start from there. I want you guys to notice that this is so simple to do that I'm not even gonna bother taking the time to clear my workbench off. I'm just doing it right on the back of this trailer that I have sitting here. Go ahead and make your cut on that first piece. All right, now what you wanna do is you wanna take your sandpaper and you wanna sand this really quick just to kind of clean it up and then run it around the edge. That way you don't have any jagged pieces. Just like that. Okay, and once you have that bottom part of the jaw jacker cut and sanded down, you're gonna put your cross on one end and you're gonna put one of your 90 degree elbows on the other end. And these should line up perfectly just like that. All right, now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make this piece and we're gonna make this piece. And this is gonna be the piece that the rod actually goes into. So this is gonna support all the way to the rod. This is the piece here that you're gonna need to adjust based off of the length of your rod and the weight of the rod. So we're just gonna cut it to a kind of a standard length. And if you need to make adjustments later, you definitely can. So I'm gonna cut mine to about four inches, and that's only because I have such a long rod, so I need a little bit of extra height on this thing. Yours might be different. Okay, and there's our vertical piece, and that's gonna go right into that 90 degree elbow, just like that, and go ahead and push it all the way down in there, nice and tight. Just like that. And conveniently enough, the piece that's gonna sit on here just like that, that the actual rod goes into, when I cut this off, it was actually just about the perfect length, so I don't really need to cut it, but I'm gonna go ahead and sand it down. Once you've got that sanded down, you're gonna take your 45 degree elbow, and that's gonna go right on the top, just like that. Push it on there nice and tight, and you wanna make sure that it's facing perfectly right down the length of the backbone of the jaw jacker here. And you can always adjust it later, it's not a huge deal right now. So go ahead and put that on there, and then you're gonna take this piece and push it right on in there, just like that. And this is where using the one inch size PVC comes into play, because most of these ice fishing rod handles are gonna perfectly fit nice and snug right into that PVC just like that. If you use a, an inch and a quarter, it's gonna be too big and this rod's gonna wobble around and there is a chance that if you get a big enough fish on, it could pull that rod right out and you could potentially lose your rod down the hole or something like that, or it could pop out and you wouldn't get a very good hook set because now there's all that slack and it's not really doing what it's supposed to do. So the one inch PVC kind of is important. Obviously some ice fishing handles aren't gonna fit in this and you might have to upsize or downsize in PVC sizes to make sure that there's a nice tight fit. Okay, and now we're gonna cut the legs and the legs are gonna go right in here and they're gonna stick out side to side and that's what's gonna keep it from tipping over when you have a fish on. The length of the legs don't really matter. You just wanna make sure that they're long enough to actually support this thing and keep it stable. On the other one that I did, I did them about 10 inches and I'm gonna do the same on this one. But like I said, it doesn't really matter so I'm not even gonna really measure. You just wanna make sure that they're equal so it looks decent and appealing to the eye. sand those down real quick. Okay, 
Now we're gonna take those caps and we're gonna put them over the ends just like that. And like I said, this is kind of an optional step, but I think it makes it look better. And then you're gonna go ahead and take each of those legs and push it into either side of the team. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the little connector piece. It's gonna connect these two pieces like this. And this only needs to be about two inches long, inch and a half, something around there. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off real quick. Go ahead and sand it down. And once you have that piece cut out, go ahead and we're gonna pop it right in there just like that and then take your other 90 degree elbow and stick it on there just like that. And that elbow should be facing upwards and should be lined up right down the center with the other pieces. Next, we're gonna make this little connector piece here and this should be about the same size, maybe even a touch shorter. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off now. Go ahead and stick it right in there. Perfect. All right, so now we're gonna take that one final cap that we have and we're gonna drill a hole directly in the center of it. And then take your metal eyelet with that nut and you're gonna put it right through that center hole that you just drilled. And go ahead and put the nut on the back side of that and go ahead and get it tightened down. And I don't have any deep well sockets out here. They're all in the garage. So I'm going to take my pliers and just kind of tighten this thing down. It's not really that big of a deal. You just want to make sure that this is nice and tight so it doesn't come loose while you're out on the ice trying to use it. And that ought to do it. And then that piece that we just created here is gonna go right down over the top and you wanna make sure that that eyelet is facing forward just like that. Push it down on there nice and tight and it should look just about like that. Okay, so we're almost done with this DIY jaw jacker. The final step is we need to make this triggering mechanism that I showed you earlier and that's where this is gonna come into play. Now, I talked about this a little bit at the beginning of the episode, and this is the handle off of a one gallon paint can. You can find these, and this is probably gonna be the cheapest, easiest way to do this. You can find these pretty much anywhere. Chances are you probably have a paint can with one of these on it, sitting around your house or in your garage or something, or one of your buddies, your friend, your parent, someone like that probably has a paint can that you can steal a handle off of. If you don't, you can pick up the cheapest clearance paint can down at the hardware store for a couple bucks, or you can even use the handle off of a five gallon or a one gallon bucket. If you choose to do that, the one gallon is probably gonna be the perfect length. If you use the five gallon, you're probably gonna have to cut it, but that's not that big of a deal. Also, you can use high gauge wire if you want. You just have to make sure that you have something strong enough that it's not gonna bend under pressure of the rod being attached to the end of it. So to turn this into this, it's actually not that difficult. All you need is that pair of needle nose pliers. So the very first thing that we're gonna do, and I'm gonna kind of use my previously made one here as a template. The first thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to make this little bend right here. And this is where the line is actually gonna sit. And when the line gets tugged on, this is the first thing that that line is gonna be going through. So in order to do that, we're gonna choose one of the ends. I'm just gonna choose this end right here. It already has that little curve in it, so that's super convenient. We don't need to do anything with that. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold it like this and you're going to want to take your pliers and you're going to want to bend this at an angle. Now I'm bending it probably about an inch up right here. You can, it doesn't really matter too much, but this is just where I found it works best for my length of rod and the length of the jaw jacker that I'm creating. 
Now from this here, you're gonna bend it 90 degrees sideways. So just put a little bit of pressure and make a perfect 90 degree angle, just like that. Okay, now the next thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to straighten this out like this here. And it needs to be about six to seven inches long. At least mine does. Yours might be a little bit different. Like I said, if you're using a shorter or a lighter action rod, you might need a shorter or even a longer trigger mechanism. So go ahead and hold it right on this bend that you've already made. Take your pliers and just start straightening it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I've got this thing straightened out pretty well. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it to be like super wavy or something like that. And I've got it measured out to where I want. This is the same measurement that I used to make my previous one, so I know that it works. So now what we're gonna do is you wanna hold it like this with your 90 degree angle facing down, and you're gonna bend this in a curve 180 degrees, and it's gonna run parallel on top, just like that. So to do that, find the point where you wanna bend it, and then go ahead, grip it tightly with your pliers, and then start bending it over the top. And you can also do it this way, just to kind of get it started. And use your hands to kind of push it together, and then use your pliers to finish it off and get that nice, even curve, just like that. Now, once you have that curve in there, you need to straighten this top part out again. Okay, and it should look just about like that. Now, the top part, I'm gonna make my bend up here at about four inches in length. Like I said, yours might be different, but that's just the specifications that work for my size rod. Once you find where you wanna bend it, you're gonna bend it 90 degrees straight up. So we're gonna do it the exact same way that we did that first one. So just take it, put your pliers right where you want the corner and go ahead and bend it just like that. And you should be left with something that looks like that. Now go ahead and straighten out this top piece here and you can probably just use your hands to do it. There's still, still should be just enough on there where you can get some leverage. And if not, you can use your pliers. Now we're almost done. The final step to this is we need to straighten this top part out because that's what is gonna actually lock on to the eye of the rod. So if you have this hook, the rod's just gonna hook on there and when a fish tugs, it's not gonna release because this is gonna be hooked around it. So you, you need to start with straightening this out and actually this needs to be pointed um, facing backwards. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bend it just like that and it should be about parallel up here with all this stuff down here. And after you twist it, you might need to straighten your, uh, your vertical section back out just a little bit. All right, final step, take your pliers and you're gonna put them right back here. Now, one thing that I recommend is don't use pliers that have really, really deep teeth in them because if you mark this up too much, it might actually create a spot that kind of grips the eye of the rod and you don't want that. You want the rod, the rod to be able to evenly slide off of there as soon as the fish tugs on it. So just be kind of light. You might wanna use a section of your pliers that has a nice smooth part so you don't damage anything. And you're just gonna bend that open. Once you bend that open, you're probably gonna have something that looks like this. You wanna take your pliers and straighten that back out. And you should be left with something that looks roughly like this. Now this is obviously going to need more adjustment, but you're not gonna know exactly how to adjust it until you put it on the jaw jacker and get a rod in there. So that's what we're gonna do now and we're gonna figure out what kind of fine adjustment this little tip here needs to let that rod fly off as soon as the fish tugs on the line. Okay, now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go ahead and slide this through just like that. And this is how this is gonna sit on here. So you're gonna put this on here and then we're gonna go ahead and put a rod in here so we can see how we need to adjust the tip. All right, so now we're ready to put our rod in here. So go ahead and stick your rod all the way down in there up to the handle just like that. 
Now, guys, before we go on, I cannot stress this enough. Do not test this device with a hook on your line. The reason is, is while you're testing this, you don't know if this is gonna be set correctly. So that rod could pop off there at any time. And if you have a hook on here, you're liable to hook yourself. You could hit yourself in the eye. You could hook your clothes. So just don't do it. Take the hook off while you're testing this. And ideally you should take your split shot off too, but I didn't do that. So just be careful. And you never wanna have your face over the top of this thing, especially while you're testing it out and you don't know how it's gonna behave. All right, so now we're gonna do the first initial test to see if this is actually going to work or if we need to make adjustment. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is bring the tip of your rod down and you're gonna start by trying very carefully without your face over the top to see if you can set it on the triggering device without it triggering. And in this case, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to bend the triggering device just slightly towards the back. And what that's gonna do is give it just a little bit more hook to hold on to the fishing rod. Okay, and you don't need to make very large adjustments. In fact, you should make really small adjustments that way you don't go too far. So now I made a really small adjustment. We're gonna go ahead and put that back on there and it appears that this time it might actually hold, which it does look like it is going to. Now, the next thing that you're gonna do is take this line and the line is gonna sit through this little cradle down here. With the line sitting through that cradle, what's gonna happen is when a fish starts tugging on your line down here, it's gonna pull down on the front of this triggering mechanism. By doing that, it's gonna tip the entire mechanism forward and it should tip forward just enough that the eye of the rod will slide off of the top. So we're gonna give it a test and see if it does and we need to see how much force it actually takes for that to happen. So that's how it works. As you can see, it took just a little bit more force than I'm going to be happy with. So I'm gonna take this back out and I'm going to bend it just a little bit more forward. I bent it just a touch too much the first time. Okay, and go ahead and put it back in and we're gonna try it one more time. And hopefully this is gonna be the one that works. And unfortunately, now I've gone too far the other way. So just keep repeating this process until you find that perfect spot. Go ahead and put your line back through that little line cradle down there and give it a test. Now that was a whole lot better. That I'm confident that if a, even a small little eight inch stocky was pulling on it, that would trigger it. Now I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna repeat this testing process probably three, four, maybe even five more times because I need to know before I take it out of the ice that it's gonna function exactly how I want every single time. See that time it seemed to get caught up a little bit more. So let's do a couple more tests and see if that happens again. We might need to make a couple more fine adjustments. So I'm gonna make a couple more really fine adjustments to this thing just to make sure that it triggers exactly how I want, when I want, every single time. I'm pretty darn pleased with how these jaw jackers are performing and I think that they're going to be absolutely awesome out on the ice. I hope you guys enjoyed this DIY video. This is a super easy, quick and cheap way to get yourself some jaw jackers and get out on the ice 
and become a lot more productive and efficient at catching fish. I really did have a great time building these jaw jackers and I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm gonna do some more ice fishing videos that should be coming up here shortly. I have a couple on my channel already you can check out if you're interested. And again, thank you guys so much.